So the next common error or issues that you may encounter as you're finalizing your PCB design are errors in the design rule check. Um, sometimes you'll see a whole host of errors that you may have to work through to fix. So it's a good aim to make sure that when you're finished the design, you run a DRC check and it passes all of it error free. You don't want to be sending something to the manufacturer that you know violates a DRC error. And you don't want to be sending something to your lecturer that you know violates a DRC error because you will be marked down. So there are several common errors that uh, may pop up. For example, unrouted nets or net antennas that tell you that you forgot to lay a track down to make sure a net connection was met. Constraint violations. These constraints could be track widths, uh, polygon widths, uh, different hole sizes, a whole bunch of constraints that we've put into the design rules and one of them is being violated. Short circuits are a less common one, uh, but you can still see them. It simply means that two of your routing tracks have overlapping on one side of the board, which means that the signals will be mixed and you will get a short circuit error and something could blow up. The final common error you'll see are silk screen violations. Typically we see these called silk to solder violations or silk to silk violations. They simply mean that the silk screen on your board won't look as nice because you have overlapping information on the silk screen layers. So these are some things to look out for. Let's try and clean up a project that had a few DRC errors. So here we have uh, an Altium board um, from CC2511 that actually has a few DRC errors and we're going to correct them one by one so that we can have an error-free design. So what I'd like to do is run a design rule check. So tools, uh, the very first option, design rule check. Uh, and you wanna run the check via pressing the button in the bottom left of your screen. So Altium produces uh, an output that lists all of the errors in your current design. So as you can see for this particular design, there are a lot. So in order to see exactly what parts of our design are causing these errors, we have to close this messages output and look at the errors shown here. So as you can see, we have 12 silk to silk violations, 20 silk to solder violations, four hole size constraints, one short circuit constraint, and one width constraint. Uh, so the links shown uh, here are clickable and allow you to go directly to those errors. So I click this link uh, and then I wanna click the short circuit constraint and it takes me right to where it's occurring uh, right here. So it's difficult to see the short circuit constraint in this option. So it's difficult to see what this short constraint is actually pointing to. We'll need to move this component so that the pad isn't overlapping whatever is causing this overlapping constraint. So I'm gonna grab this little switch and slightly move it. And as you can see, there's a little bit of track that was left over perhaps from a a previous connection that someone tried to route. So I move it slightly to the right. I'm gonna select this track, delete that. It was causing a short circuit constraint, meaning that it was overlapping with this pin two and causing uh, some errors. So I simply move it out of the way uh, and then I wanna move our switch back into position. So I grab the switch, move it a little bit back over and we've changed the design. So we need to re these polygons. And now to check that the short circuit constraint no longer exists, we need to run the design rule check again. So tools, design rule check, and run design rule check. We can close this messages menu and simply look at the design here. Fortunately, uh, there are no short circuit constraints anymore. So we've cleaned up one error. And I've also found that that also cleaned up a width constraint that we were causing. So we've, we've removed two errors. We've hit two birds with one stone. Uh, let's keep moving forward. So what I want to look at now are these hole size constraints. So I can click hole size constraints and then we have all of our specific constraints. So this one is telling us that we're using a three millimeter hole and the maximum allowable hole is 2.54 millimeters. So these holes right here are larger than the design maximum that we've set. So I would think that 2.54 millimeters is quite a small maximum for most fabricators. So for this design rule, I wanna change the design rules that we're checking against because I don't think they're accurate. So to do this, let's, uh, let's go to design and you're looking for rules, which is three down in the drop down menu. 
And the specific rule that I want to change is hole size. So look through um, all of the different rules are listed here. I'm specifically looking for hole size. It's under manufacturing. Go down a few and now we're at hole size. So if I look at this constraint, it's telling us that we have a minimum hole size of, what's that, 0 0.025 millimeters and a maximum of 2.54, which I would like to make a lot bigger because I've seen PCBs with you know very large holes and let's make a maximum of 10 millimeters. I'll select apply, okay. And now let's run our design rule check again via tools, design rule check, click the bottom button. Uh, we can close this messages menu and now we've removed all four of those whole size constraints. So we're getting there. The only things that are left are silk violations. So let's look at our silk to silk violations first of all, by clicking this option. And as you can see, we have there's a violation on R6, R5, R4. So let's first look at the silk to silk violation for resistor R6. So let's zoom out a little bit here. So clearly this violation is caused by the designated name R6 overlapping the resistor body uh, silk. So what we want to do is probably move our designated text away from the other silk screen error so that we can clearly read it. To do this, we want to click the R6 text. So double click anywhere on R6 and it brings up a menu. What were you trying to select? Were you trying to select the polygon? No. Were you trying to select the resistor? No. We were trying to select this text R6 and now that's what we've done. And now we can have control over moving it. So what I want to do is just move it away from the other silk screen. And I can already see that we're going to have to do this for R5, R4 and several other things, maybe even LED too. So what I'm going to go through quickly is moving all of the different violations uh, away from each other. So anywhere there's a designated text that's overlapping another piece of the silk screen, I'm gonna move it away from it. So let's, let's go ahead and do that now. So I've moved around a lot of the silk to silk violations. Uh, let's now uh, run a design rule check and hopefully see that they've been removed completely. So tools, design rule check, select the bottom left button uh, and we'll go to have a look at our silk to silk violations. So we've reduced them, but there are still some existing ones. So we're looking at LED 2, uh, 4, 30, 29 and LED 3. So let's specifically go to those. So even those two, these two aren't overlapping, they're very close to each other. So what we might want to do is just make the size of the text a little smaller. And we can do that simply by changing the width and the height of the text. So there we go, it's a little bit smaller. That should not violate. Uh, and similarly, I've cleaned up a lot of those uh, silk to silk errors. So let's rerun the design rule check. And if we go to have a look at the menu, we so we've removed all of the silk to silk errors. Uh, they were due to poor placement of text designators and names. And the only errors left are silk to solder mask errors. So let's click to investigate how each of these ones look. So these first ones are on LED3, then LED2, LED1. So let's have a look at what the nature of those are. So unfortunately, it looks like that these errors are due to a component which we have no control over changing if we didn't create that library. So unfortunately, within this LED component, they've placed the pads too close to silk screen layers. Now, as I mentioned, this won't prohibit it from being manufactured. The reason for that is important layers such as our holes and our copper are more prioritized rather than our silk screen. So what would happen here is the silk screen is too close to those layers. That portion of silk screen won't be printed to the board. However, the rest of it will. So it's purely a cosmetic error. And maybe if we want to just ensure that our DRC check is uh, satisfied for all of these different components, we may need to change our design rules. So let's have a deeper look at the rule violation. 
It says there's a silk to solder mask where we're much less than the minimum distance, which is 0.254 millimeters. Uh, and it looks like the minimum violation is 0.064. So let's, let's update our design rules to be a minimum less than this so that we actually uh, can remove these errors from our design. So going back to our PCB, I want to change some design rules. I select design, rules. I'm looking specifically for silk to solder mask clearance. Uh, so this is under manufacturing, silk to solder mask clearance, and the minimum clearance distance. I want to change that to be less than 0.64. So let's choose 0.6 millimeters. I go apply, OK, and now we can run the design rule check again. And as you can see, we've cleaned up all of those uh, solder mask violations that were inherent with the components that we chose. So another way to deal with that is to choose different components or to use your own components that don't violate those errors. So there we go. We've taken a design that had many, many different uh, DRC errors and we've basically corrected each one of them. So I advise you do this before you send away your designs to a manufacturer.